What's up everybody, welcome back to Mount MoGraph. My name's Matt and in today's video, we're gonna be making this trendy flat logo. So this is actually extremely easy to make and this was also my, uh, probably gonna be my quickest video I think. Uh, but I'll show you the steps to actually get this into, this is actually a 3D object. I'll show you how to get this really cool uh, flat looking design that I think is gonna be like really all over the place soon. I mean, you can make app icons with this, you can do a ton of stuff. Um, YouTube uh, username icons I don't know but I think this looks really cool and it's using this hard shadow um, that I think is gonna be a really 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 popular effect soon um, as same with the low poly look so I promise I have I have a lot of suggestions uh, from everybody and I have a list I swear of everybody's suggestions that I'll be getting to eventually I've just been absolutely slammed lately and haven't had a chance to uh, sit down and make these videos. So I'm just putting this one up. Um, it's a quick video with some cool tips in it that I think will be really helpful for somebody. So anyway, uh, I have some cool videos actually coming on their way. I'm hoping to get two low poly videos up this week as well as a car rigging um, video. But anyway, I'll be showing you this uh, cool plugin today that will import your Illustrator files into Cinema 4D and make them 3D for you and it's completely free. So I think that's pretty awesome in itself and uh, let's just real quick create a really uh, short little icon or something. So I'm just going to create this parrot head again. Um, so that was actually extremely easy to make. You can see my workflow for this um, incredible bird. Whoa. That's not part of my workflow, but uh, yeah, so this is probably gonna look pretty stupid. I can, whoa, okay, I'm just gonna start this beak over. I was talking too much. Anyway, uh, yeah, Illustrator is super easy to use if you're not familiar with it, so. And it's, I just think it's awesome that you're able to actually take an Illustrator file now and just throw it into 3D space. Um, this is a really great way for you to create splines. Uh, you know how like, in cinema, like tracing splines can be pretty annoying. Uh, well, this this plugin I'm going to be showing you today will take away all that annoyance, and you'll be able to import anything from like sport team logos um, to uh, really just a ton of stuff. I mean, you can make yeah sports team logos. Uh, you can do see like I'm tr I'm talking so much that I'm having trouble drawing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so you can do sports team logos. Like I mean, you can import like a Knicks. Um, photo or Red Bull logo or really whatever the heck you want and uh, just real quick and easy uh, you can have that in uh, as a 3d object man that was like the most incoherent coherent sentence ever uh, but I hope you guys kind of got the gist of what I was trying to say uh, so anyway I'm just cutting this and I'm gonna make this a different color real quick should probably make these layers have no outline all right so there we go I got my really simple logo um, and this whole minimal, minimal style I think is gonna be popular as well soon. And so I'm just gonna make some quick text. I'm gonna say, call this company Tropic. Um, I'm making it into a company logo, I guess, but you can really do whatever the heck you want. And I'll just pick a random font. Do Eldo uh, again. And okay, that looks good to me. And just when you have a font selected in order to get it into uh, Cinema, what you're gonna to wanna to go and do is click type in your uh, drop down here and go to, where is this, create outlines. And then your uh, this will all be like a spline paths now, which will be very helpful. So uh, I'm just gonna pick two more quick colors here. Uh, and now what you're gonna to wanna to do for this effect in order to create a really quick little like app logo or, or whatever is, uh, just uh, make the background for your logo as well right now. So I'm just gonna do something like that looks pretty good and I'm also going to just pick what my floor is gonna look like and just get that done with uh, while we're inside of this program. So that looks pretty good. It looks very minimal, it looks very cheesy and it looks like it's gonna be very popular soon. So I'm gonna save this to my desktop just as a logo and uh, now we're gonna hop on over to the cool stuff and I promise I'll keep this video short. So let's go into Cinema 4D and basically there's a link in the video description so be sure to check to an app, a little little plugin called uh, CV Art Smart and it's made by Cineversity.com uh, which is like a Cinema 4D training site 
which has some cool videos if you want to subscribe and pay for it or um, this is offered just for a free sign up you can get this art smart plugin so yeah just like throw your email in there um, they don't spam you or anything I promise and it's completely free and totally worth it so with this plugin um, the old way you had to do it was you would create an illustrator file and had to save it as an illustrator 8 file and only be able to import it as a spline object but with this art smart thing, I, all I have to do is just drag my logo that I made and I didn't even separate it into layers into my little art section here and boom, it is now in 3D. And th so this will work for any Illustrator file you have. And so I'll show you a couple quick settings for this CV art smart object and uh, then we'll get into the cool stuff. So right off the bat, this, there's something called path spread, which uh, just separates the distance between your paths, which makes sense. So you can animate this stuff by adding keyframes and just, you know, make like an, a quick logo build like this, which would probably look cool if it flies like if the camera is like here or something and all your stuff just flies in and creates a logo. Um, you could do something like that. Uh, and then you can also change your extrude depth, which is the distance, um, just like the extrude object inside Cinema 4D, the width of your layer. But for, for what we're doing today, I'm going to set my path spread just to zero. So it's all the same, like on the same plane. And I'm going to turn my extrude depth down to like 50. Um, additionally in this, you can go to your caps and add a fillet cap if that is the look you're going for. So I'm going to just do two steps in 0.5 and two steps and 0.5 and what this is going to do is just round our edges just the smallest little bit um, which always looks good whether it's noticeable or not um so anyway so in order to get our layers out of this art smart thing which i highly recommend using because it's really cool um just press c to make it editable and so that's something they don't really explain to you but now that <laughs> now that i told you i hope that's helpful so i'm just going to drag these layers out and now as you can see all of my paths are actually their own layer so now I can have this eye that floats around or whatever and uh, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna name this layer logo and I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees onto its back here and grab my back layer you can go ahead and name these layers if you feel like it but uh, I mean this is pretty self-explanatory so I won't right now uh, and then just drag your layers and drag them up and so this is going to start to create our uh, little logo I'm gonna make this uh, bottom one bigger and so there we go we're already starting to get something pretty cool um, I can do a quick preview and check that out I mean these layers are all on top of each other but in no time at all we have this really cool 3d design so let's just go ahead and keep uh, keep making this separated just a little bit and I mean this is where you can really spend some time uh, getting exactly the look you want I'm just gonna go through this real quick just so you guys can see the general workflow for importing uh, spline objects into uh, Cinema 4D so anyway uh, let's see how this is ooh, just dragging that around so I'll scale this up just a touch because we have some um, interception here and maybe it's fine I don't really care you guys will get the idea whoa okay so there we go in about two minutes I have a uh, a logo that I literally designed inside uh, cinema 4d um, oh crap I forgot to show you guys one other cool thing so let me actually go back a couple steps I'm sorry about that guys uh, and just go back into you can just do command Z until you have your art smart object all back together. And when you're going to your object settings, you can go and click create materials and that'll create all your colors for these layers. So now let's press C and uh, just rotate this 90 degrees and uh, just jump back to where we were. Uh, I forgot to do that. And that is uh, one of the cool things about this plugin. So anyway, uh, now that we have your layers all set up, we'll just do what we did and which I guess is good practice and uh, just set up uh, what you want your little I'm gonna pretend this is like an app icon for the for some company so you guys can do the same thing or make it look however you wish so just gonna drag stuff up and just give some perspective to it and you can do this with way more complicated splines I just chose to do something real quick and easy like this uh, just because it was real quick and easy, <laughs> quite literally. Uh, so yeah, just uh, have fun with it though. Um, this plugin is really cool um, and definitely can save you a lot of time. It's way quicker than just tracing objects. Um, 
Okay, so now, now we're back to where we needed to be. So now I have this logo that I made inside of Illustrator, like I just mentioned. And we also have all of our materials that we can now go and add like a reflection to or whatever. Um, and it'll actually happen inside of um, to the materials that are on the layer. Um, if I add a light to this or something, we'll see maybe more. I put that in a horrible spot, but yeah, so these materials are completely editable as well. I don't know why my light is not working as well as it should, but we won't worry about that. What the heck has just happened? Oh, I moved it. That's what happened. All right, well, that all makes sense. Anyway, um, so we have this logo here. And let me show you just real quick how to create that flat style and get these hard shadows if you don't know. Um, and also how to get like this really like um, simple looking color scheme. Um, so what you can do is just highlight all of your materials here and you'll have your in your attribute manager, it's going to say nine elements selected. So just real quick, uh, let's turn on like in our uh, specular channel, we can just add like, uh, no, in our color channel, let's just add a Fresnel. Um, and just set this to mix mode of add. And as you can see, it changes all of our textures here. And you can do that for a lot of other settings as well. I'm just gonna do it real simple and we'll do a quick render. Now we have this softer look to everything. So uh, let's just go into our uh, settings here and I'm gonna turn off my ambient inclusion, go into effect and just turn on global illumination. Well, in your presets, uh, you can just set this to like, exterior physical sky um, that one should be fine and we'll do a quick preview so there's no lights in the scene so we might not get anything yet yeah we don't so we need to add some lights to the scene i'd kind of jump the gun on that um, but let's call this logo and i hope you guys are liking this video i know it's a little different but i still think it's pretty cool and you guys should be able to use it for a lot of your own projects so anyway we'll, we'll make a light real quick go into your general settings type and we'll make it an area and shadow will make area our details we will turn our outer radius up um, we will turn what else do we want to turn up our fall off let's make that inverse square clamped we'll have it only come out of the z direction and so that's going to be the blue arrow on your uh, light here and we'll go into our visibility and just turn your sample distance uh, up i'm going to turn mine to 54 i guess um, i used i've uh, talked about this in some other videos but these are just really great generic light settings to just get a pretty pretty uh quick and easy looking light for your scene so we'll see how this is looking so yeah, this Fresnel is kind of giving it that really soft glow, which I, I like. So uh, let's just go into our general settings on our light one more time. And I'm gonna pick a kind of sunny uh, yellow to, just to give it that a uh, little bit of a tropical vibe since it's a tropical company. And uh, that is uh, pretty bad, actually. I'll turn this up and then maybe I crank that up a little bit too much. So we just want it to brighten up the scene. Um, I'm just gonna play around with this for one more second. All right, so I'm liking how this looks. Um, we do have a little bit of uh, spots going on in here, which can be fixed very easily in your render settings, but that looks pretty good. I might even lift this light up a little bit and maybe move it back. And now let's create our light and to create our um, hard shadows. So what we're gonna do is just create a new light object and just put it over in the corner and uh, set your shadow to ray traced hard. And that is pretty much all you're gonna have to do. Um, one thing to note though, is you're gonna want your light to be closer to the ground than, um, because then like the light is only gonna come out and hit stuff on the same plane as it, opposed to like the stuff on the top. So uh, we'll just go over here and see how this is looking. Let's do a quick preview. And the light, since it's an infinite light, should be affecting our uh, surface here. And you can kind of see the lines starting to come in. Um, this isn't like the most pretty render or anything, but it's this is really just to show you guys how to do it. Um, and you can definitely tweak some settings as well. So this is looking kind of cool. We have this nice hard, hard uh, shadow coming on here. And what you can do is if you want a darker shadow, just go into your shadow and turn your density up. So I'm gonna turn this up to like 159. It should be significantly darker. Um, yeah, it looks a little darker and our scene is dark. So what we can do is go into our render settings, uh, global illumination and just turn your gamma up and that's going to uh, make everything brighter. So let's check that out. As you can see, it's already reading everything as a brighter color. Oh man, that looks like garbage. Um, so don't do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you guys can mess around with this, uh, way more. Um, I'm not sure what settings to change right now. 
Um, I think that Fresnel is actually messing up our lighting. So maybe I can turn these off real quick or just turn the ad down. Um, and we'll see if that helps out. But anyway, you guys can have a lot of fun with this. You can literally import anything you make inside of Illustrator into uh, Cinema 4D and make it 3D. So that could be a Red Bull logo or your favorite sports team and really spend some time with the lights. But yeah, go and download this ArtSmart thing and just explore it. It's a really cool little plugin and it's totally free. So that's the best part. Anyway, this was uh, Matt from Mountain Mograph and today we made these uh, trendy flat logos. So I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, drop me a comment or leave me a like. I do have some real videos coming. I just wanted to get something kind of cool up for today. So anyway, uh, this was Matt from Mountain Mograph and get your learn on. Peace guys.